so okay, am I recording? Yep, I am. <coughs> yeah, all right, so <laughs> great turnout. I think we're going to get more people coming in, though, uh, based on what the 9 a.m. was last week. So let's get started. Uh, yeah, so this week I'm just going to talk about determinants. Uh, so Wednesday recitation, we didn't get into vector spaces, and, and that's because Davi didn't get into vector spaces before Wednesday, and so I just decided to abstain from that. Uh, so yeah, we'll talk about determinants. Just I guess a lot of ex not not a lot of examples, but I'm gonna try to go over more of the theory. Um, I do encourage you guys to watch. Like I have a bunch of videos on determinants that are essentially like how do we calculate determinants. So that's like the one thing I'm gonna skip is just like just the brute force calculation because I don't think it's really necessary to spend like 25 minutes going through those methods. So. Uh, you, you can watch those on your free time. And so today, uh, so Wednesday's recitation, I thought went terribly, mainly because I just did examples over and over, and everyone just seemed really lost. Um, and so instead of just throwing a bunch of examples, I felt like it's probably better if I like actually motivated some of this like theory and then did examples after I explained like why I could do some of the things that I do. So. Uh, hopefully this is going to be a more cohesive like story almost that we're going to talk about today. And uh, yeah, so why don't we get started um, with determinants now that like five other people just joined. So we're talking about determinants today. Determinants. Okay. And let's just start then with the geometric interpretation of the determinant. Which is, if we have, so again, so with the determinant, we need n vectors in n space, right? So for example, we can have three vectors in R3. Okay, so what is then the determinant? <coughs> of n vectors in n space. Well, if we have three vectors in R3, let's say here, here, and uh, here, right? The determinant tells us what is the volume spanned by the three vectors, uh, by the n vectors. So in three-dimensional space, right, we have three vectors and so the volume spanned by these three vectors would be some kind of parallelopiped, and it would be like that volume, right? So that's a geometric interpretation. It's just what is the volume of n vectors in n space? We do three because I can, we can visualize three, but the same thing holds then. Like if I have a five-dimensional space and I have five vectors, it's like what's the volume in 5D spanned by these five vectors, okay? And we've seen this interpretation since like Math 114. Um, in fact, we actually calculated this in Math 114. So how is it different now? Well, I mean, the geometric interpretation is still important. But here's, here's the really algebraic interpretation. Um, so essentially, what we're going to say then is the determinant all right, sends an element in MNR or not R, actually I want M and C, to C. So what does this mean? This looks like a load of trash right now, right? Uh, none of this makes sense. Well, this kind of notation we'll see a lot coming like really soon. And what it means then is, okay, so here, this is the name of my function. All right, it's the determinant function. It's input. is MNC, and we'll talk about what that is in a second. And its output is some complex number. All right, and so what is MNC? Uh, since you guys got into vector spaces yesterday, I can talk about this in terms of vector spaces, but it's, uh, it's a three by three, it's not three by three. Ooh. It's 
n by n square matrices with complex valued entries. <coughs> All right, so I'm going to take some square matrix. Its entries are complex, and I'm going to spit out a number uh, that's also complex. Um, and that's, that's the determinant function. So why am I using <coughs> complex numbers? Well, we talked about, I think, in the first recitation, where real numbers are actually just complex numbers, <coughs> but, you're, but like the imaginary part is 0. right? So when you have a plus bi, if b is 0, then you get a real number. Right? So that's why we say, that's why, we, that's why we're using c, right? complex valued entries, rather than real valued entries. If you want to think about it that way, you can. But again, you can have matrices with complex entries. So keep that in mind. All right, so that's the algebraic interpretation. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's like the motivating factor, I guess. Or like that's how you want to think of determinants. Um, determinants really are a function um, from matrices <coughs> to real numbers or to complex numbers. OK. So now let's talk about some properties. So properties of matrices. What are they? Um, okay, so <coughs> let's say A, B are square, n by n matrices. Uh, first property is that the determinant of A will be equal to its transpose. Uh, the second property is if I take the determinant of A times B, that's the same thing as if I did the determinant of A times the determinant of B. And then the third one uh, is the determinant of A inverse is equal to the determinant of A inverse. So it's 1 over the determinant of A. And of course, this is assuming that A is invertible. OK? Uh, we can do a proof on the last one, but let's not, I'd rather not. So any questions so far? None of this should be very hard to believe right now. All right. So then let's talk about how do we calculate determinants, right? And this is going to be the overarching theme for the next 30 minutes, I think. So, so I talked about this earlier, but uh, not really. So we have cofactor expansion. And so what is cofactor expansion? Well, it's, it's like the cross product method where you like cross out row and, rows and columns. And then you like take the smaller matrix and you calculate the determinant of those. So that's cofactor expansion. We've seen this uh, in 114. Number two is going to be row reduction. All right. And so why can we row reduce? Well, this row reduction essentially relies on the fact that upper or, or, or triangular matrices in general, so UL slash, um, oh wait, UT slash LT. So upper or lower triangular matrices um, determinant is just a uh, product of the diagonals of the diagonal. All right, so if you have an upper or lower triangular matrix, the determinant is just the product on the diagonal. And then number three, I'll put in 
parentheses because it really varies from semester to semester depending on what professors like to do. But um, there's stuff you can do with block matrices. So there's some like shenanigans um, where if you have block matrices, you can actually make the determinant a lot easier to calculate than if you did not have block matrices. So what is a block matrix? Again, so if you have like a four by four, um, just think of it as like I got blocks of two by twos now. Um, so that's what a block matrix is. Uh, but so generally for even dimensions. Well, that's not always true, but. OK, so number three, not going to talk about. Number one and two, we're going to we talk about a little bit today. But again, uh, see videos because I've essentially done examples of all of these in like the videos I have on the website. So I don't want to waste recitation time going through these. Um, so you can watch this on your own time. Pretty sure Davi did examples in class as well. So, um, all right. So what are we going to do? Well, I wrote this thing in red is because we're going to prove it or somewhat of a proof um, that the determinant of upper triangular, lower triangular matrix um, is product of diagonals. All right, so, and so it's not really a proof because the proper way to prove it is assume an n by n matrix and then prove it on induction, but we're not going to do that. So uh, we're just going to come up with some matrix. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right. So here's our matrix, right? It's upper triangular. We're assuming this is a big fat zero down in the bottom. All right, and we want to find the determinant of this. <coughs> so uh, the probable way to actually write this would be, uh, we'll do that later. So let's find the determinant. Okay, and. So how, how do we want to do this? Well, we can't really, so, so, so row, again, row reduction relies on the fact that the determinant is the product of the diagonal. So we can't really do row reduction here because that wouldn't make any sense. Um, it's really in like row reduced form or as much as we would want it to be. So you're going to have to use a cofactor expansion to show this. All right, so let's use cofactor expansion. And so what do we do? Okay, so we cross out the first row and the first column. Right, so this is equal to 1, and the 1 I'm referring to is this 1 times. And then with cofactor expansion, you have this term where it's like, oh, you have negative 1 to the i plus j, where i and j are like the indices of like whatever term you crossed out. So our 1 in the top left, what is the index of that term? Yeah, 1, 1. So then this is the 1 plus 1. And then we want to take the determinant of the remaining stuff, which is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, OK? All right, now we want to add. So, so that, that was the expansion on the 1. So now let's expand on the 2. So now we take 2, we multiply it by the index of the 2, which is negative 1 to the, what index is the 2 on? 1, 2, so 1 plus 2. It's actually pretty forgiving if you like read it as 2, 1, because you'll get the right answer still. Um, but you got 1 plus 2 because it's i row then column. And then you multiply this by the determinant of, OK, what's the first column here? Zero. Yeah. Right, because now we have this column of, and that's just a big fat zero down there, right? Because <coughs> everything there is zero. So yeah, so that's zero. And then we end up with 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, we got 13, 14, 
then you have 15. And now you add No, it's a four by four because you have to take you have to take this column, yeah, we and you have to take this. No, you start you start crossing out the one, and then you cross out the two, and then you cross out the three, and you four, and then the five. Right, right, right. That's 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 what I'm that's what I'm trying to get at. That's what I'm trying to get at. So. So the next, so, 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 okay, so that was the term, that was the expansion on the two. So now, let's do the expansion on the three. So three, all right, times the index, which is negative one, this is the one plus three term, <coughs> times the determinant. Okay, what's the determinant here? Well, it's this and that. So I got another column zeros. And then I got 6, 0, 0, 0, 8, 11, 13, 0, 9, 12, 14, 15. And do we see where this is going? Like every other expansion I take from here on out. So like if I added four times negative one to the one plus four. This is just gonna be a column of zeros. And the same with five. <coughs> okay. And the idea then is, oh wait, what is then the determinant of these matrices that have a column of zero in them? Zero. It's zero, right? So we just, we don't even need to ignore them. So, so, that means then the determinant of this big matrix here is really just equal to one times the determinant of this smaller matrix. Right? So now we can just say, okay, what is then the determinant of 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15? All right. Again, we do this, we do the cofactor expansion since it's a four by four. So it's gonna be six times the determinant of 10, or, or I'm skipping a step here, times negative one to the one plus one, times the determinant, 10, 11, 12, <coughs> 13, 14, 15. All right, plus, uh, yeah, okay. So that was expansion on the six. Now we gotta do expansion on the seven. 7 times negative 1 to the 1 plus 2, determinant 0, 0, 0, 11, 13, 0, 12, 14, 15, plus, so that's expansion on the 7. And we realize that, hey, if we expand on the 8 and the 9, um, what's going to happen is that we're going to get just columns of zeros again, right? We're going to get that first column being 0. plus nine, negative one to the one plus four, times the determinant, zero, 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 and then whatever, right? So again, what's gonna happen is, the term of these matrices are all what? Zero, because of the column of zeros, right? So we don't even calculate any of these terms. So now this determinant is just equal to six times the is just equal to six times the determinant of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, which is six times, and then you have 10. All right, so now for a three by three, we all, we all know how to do this cofactor expansion because we've been doing three by three expansions for forever. So I'm not gonna add like the negative one to the whatever power, um, but this is 10 times the determinant of 13, 14, 0, 15, minus 11 times the determinant of 0, 0, 14, 15, plus 12 times the determinant of 0, 0, 13, 0. 
Okay. That's zero, that's zero. And this is actually just six times 10 times 13 times 15, right? Because the determinant of this guy on the inside is 13 times 15 <coughs> minus the <coughs> diagonal going the wrong way, which is zero times 14. And so this is six times 10 <coughs> times 13 times 15. And so now if we compare it to this up here, <coughs> right, that's exactly the same thing as that right there. Okay, so this is why when we have an upper triangular matrix, you just take the product of the diagonal. Or lower triangular. Same, 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 same argument holds. Okay, any questions? All right, so enough of that. Let's move on. Well, we're still on the topic of calculating uh, determinants. But now, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say what do row operations do? It should be and. So what are the effects of row operations on determinants? So I'm just going to have a matrix M here. And we're going to call it A. We'll just give it some random entries. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. OK? So what are raw operations <coughs> we can do? Anyone? Um, like when you multiply a row by a scalar? Yeah, sure. So let's multiply a row by a scalar. I guess we should say a row by a scalar, because we don't want to multiply multiply multiple rows at once. I mean, we could. So, so let's say I have m tilde. This is our new matrix, and let's say we just multiply the first row by a scalar. Uh, I forgot to tell you guys something. The determinant of M is equal to Q. So now what's the determinant of M tilde? KQ. KQ, yeah. OK, because I multiply that row by K, and then the determinant has to change by a factor of K as well. All right, two. Uh, Let's, let's permute rows. So here's m bar. And it's g, h, i, d, e, f, a, b, c. All right, what's the determinant of m bar? Yeah, negative q. Okay, so I switched two rows, and the term becomes negative Q. And then the last row operation is adding or subtracting one row, a multiple of one row, from another. So let's say I had M. Uh, let's call this m hat and let it be a, b, c, d minus 4, g, e minus 4, h, f minus 4, i, g, h, i. What's the determinant of m hat? Yeah, it doesn't change. So it's still Q. <coughs> okay. Any questions? All right. So now that we have all this established, let's actually take a look at some examples now. So the first one uh, is going to be uh, spring 2015. 
uh, practice midterm. Someone have a question? Okay. And the problem is this: you want to compute the determinant <laughs> of this matrix, and it's one, two, three, four, five, going down the column, and then you just count to twenty-five. Any, any ideas on how we should go about doing this? So what, so what, like, essentially, what are the two ways we can compute this determinant, and which one seems easier? Yeah, we need to just compute the determinant of this matrix. And then which way would be easier? And so someone said row operations, right? Okay. So, yeah, so we probably <coughs> want to use raw operations. Cofactor expansions look like a mess. Um, okay, so if we want to compute, if we want to do row operations, what, what should a row operation be? What should we try to do first? Okay, so we can divide the last row by five, but like, really, what are we really accomplishing there? Yeah. We can try to turn the first column into all zeros. Okay, we turn the first column into all zeros. Um, that's perfectly fine. The one problem, like it's not really a problem, but you end up with like 25 minus five times 21, so you get a negative 80, right? And then you still have like a few more columns to go. So you, then you're just dealing with like really large numbers for arithmetic, right? So probably not ideal. Um, so when you see like anything greater than a four by four on an exam, there's something going on and there should be a shortcut. Okay, and so does anyone see a shortcut here? Yeah. It subtracts like row two by row one. Okay. Or sorry, go backwards. And subtract, row, subtract row four from row five and three and four. That's fine. So you're going exactly where I thought um, we we're going to go, which is, which is good. So it's exactly what I want to do. So let's take row two and subtract row one first. All right. So row one stays the same. What does row two become? Yeah, just ones, right? One, 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 okay. All right, so let's not write down the other, uh, other rows because we can perform row operations on the other rows still, all right? So now let's do row five minus row four, <coughs> right? All right, so row three stays the same. Four, nine, 14, 19, 24. Row four stays the same, but what's row five? Yeah, so row five also ends up just being a row of ones. What's the determinant of that matrix? Yeah, it's zero, right? There's a repeated row. And remember, adding or subtracting a multiple of one row from another doesn't change the determinant, right? So we didn't change the determinant at all performing these row operations. Um, <coughs> so yeah, so, so you can say that, okay, so here just two rows are the same, so the determinant's zero. Cor technically, the correct way to say is that one row is a scalar multiple of the other row, but the scalar is one. But yeah, so when you ever have a scalar multiple of one row and the other row, the determinant's gonna be zero. And the idea is, well, you can just perform a row operation to zero out a row, and now you got a row of zeros. Okay. So again, if you see anything greater than a four by four, something's up. If you see a four by four, you might actually just have to compute it. All right. Uh, let's see. So let's take a look at this one. This one's from a midterm. Okay. <coughs> so suppose square brackets, <coughs> two 
2A, 6B, 2C. Okay, wait, I need to make sure I'm copying down the right problem. Suppose 2A, 6B, 2C, D, 3E, F, G, 3H, I is equal to negative 6. All right, so square brackets just mean like determinant, like we're taking the determinant of what's inside. Okay, so this just means these are the determinant brackets. All right, so we know that's equal to negative 6. Um, what is... A, D, uh, G, <coughs> B, E, H, C, F, I. Okay, so we're given this matrix on the left-hand side, uh, and we're trying to find what the determinant of the matrix on the right-hand side is. Okay, and any any ideas on how we would approach this? So so first of all, what kind of how are we going to compute the determinants here? Are we going to do cofactor expansion? No, because I would get like two by twos. Like like how am I going to get a determinant of a three by three from a cofactor expansion on a three by three? Right, you're not. So all right, so we're going to have to do some row operations. Um, messing around. And so <coughs> what you really want to do is you want to reconcile the differences between the left-hand side matrix and the right-hand side matrix, right? And when you reconcile those differences, you might get like, I don't know, like different scalars popping out and stuff like that, okay? So there are really two ways to go about this problem. One way is to start here, oops, is to start with this and try to end up here. Right, because you can start with that ADG BHCFI matrix, and then you can perform your row operations, and then you can get to the left hand side matrix, and then you can see what you did along the way. That's fine. Um, this direction um, is done in a video. All right, it's done in one of the videos I have on my website. So if you want to see that, go ahead. You can go watch that. I'm not going to do it in class. So we're going to do this other way, which is I actually think I actually think this other way is better. So we're going to go this way. So we're going to start out with 2A, 6B, 2C, D, 3E, F, G, 3H, I. And also I should note that uh, problem is slightly different. in the video. Uh, they essentially make you do the opposite thing. They give you this smaller guy, and then they ask you to find what the bigger guy is. But it's, it's, it's more or less the same problem. So OK, anyways, back here. So we start out with this matrix. And so we want to reconcile. Again, we want to we we turn this matrix into the one on the right-hand side. So what are some differences? Transpose, right? OK. So and what, okay, so then what happens when I transpose the matrix? What's the determinant? It's the same. It's the same <laughs> all right? So if I write this equal sign here, and I transpose this matrix, right. is everyone OK with the fact that these two matrices have the same determinant? All right. Okay, so now what do I want to do? So now how, how is this matrix now different from the one on the right-hand side? Okay. Okay, so 
Right. So, so, so essentially, there's just some scalars that are different, right? And so one of the scalars, let's say, is row two, right? There seems to be seems to be a multiple of three that we can factor out of there, right? So what happens then if I factor out a, uh, a three from row two? This becomes two H E H two C F I. Oh, let's not get that far yet, because are these is this are these determinants equal? No. One third times which matrix? The new one. The new one. What happens if I do one third times the new one? It's like it's like I'm it's like I'm dividing a row by three, right? So this is like if I take the one third in, so now then I'm going to have like two thirds. That doesn't make any sense, right? Because we're getting smaller. Yeah. So this is actually three times the determinant of that matrix. Okay. So 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 it's 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 easy. It's really easy to get confused. It's really easy to get confused. And so that's why that's why when you see these kinds of problems, you always want to do them like <coughs> one way. Um, so choose the way you like to do it. I actually like to do from like this changed matrix to the original matrix or whatever, however you want to phrase it. But yeah, so again, this matrix is three times this matrix. And so remember our determinant rules up here, right? So in, in, in the case on the right hand side, we had this guy and the left hand side, we had this guy. And so so I have to multiply m by q, or by, by the constant k, to get here. Right? So in this case, again, this matrix, this row doesn't have a 3 in it. And so to make their determinants the same, I need to multiply 3. Is that a b instead of h on the second? Yeah. <laughs> All right, are we okay here? All right, what's next? Well, we can take a transpose and then divide by, like, and then like factor out the two, but you can actually just factor out twos from the column, like that's fine. So you can factor out scalars from columns. Um, and the idea is because if I transpose, factor out the scalar, then transpose back, I could have just taken the two out of the column in the first place, right? So. Uh, Let's do that then. So this then is equal to, right? Um, okay, so we got then A, D, G, B, E, H, C, F, I. Okay. So remember, we have this three left over from before, but now I need to compare this matrix, I need to compare that matrix. So how are those two matrices different? Yeah, so the matrix on the right is going to be, the determinant of the matrix on the right is going to be smaller than the determinant on the left. And so we need to like beefen up the matrix on the right because it's smaller. So got to multiply that by two. So what is all this equal to? Well, remember, at the beginning, the determinant of this matrix is equal to negative 6. Right? And so if you think about it, negative 6 is equal to this matrix, or the determinant of this matrix, right? Because that's what we're given here. And now we know that negative 6 is equal to this guy on the right, since these are all equal signs. And we get 6 times A, D, G, B, E, H, C, F, I. Again, square brackets means determinant. And so now we can solve for the determinant by dividing both sides by 6. And so we see that 
A D G B E H C F I is equal to negative one. Any questions? All right, so th these these kinds of problems are like kind of confusing because it's like, oh, do I like divide by three or do I like multiply by a third or those are the same thing? Do I multiply by three or do I divide by three? Um, it's just really practice. So again, there's one in my video. There's also one in like the 240 notes that I did <coughs> that I wrote up that are like unfinished, but like there's an example in there as well. So um, again, you can watch the recording of this, um, or you can uh, go to those other sources for examples of this. But these kind of show up on exams, um, so good to keep in mind. All right, so that's so that was the half an hour on calculating determinants. So now let's talk about what can we do with determinants. <coughs> the most intuitive one, or the one that where you see this used all the time, is determining oh, invertibility. And we see that if the determinant of a is equal to 0, then a doesn't have an inverse, then no inverse. Well, a inverse doesn't exist. And if determinant of a is not 0, then a is invertible. And why is that? Well, let's just take a look at some really simple upper triangular matrix with determinant 0. All right, so let's consider this matrix. All right, and if we try to find the inverse, What do we have to do on the right hand side, or on the left hand side? What do we need to turn that into? Yeah, we need, to re we need to turn this entire thing in a reduced row echelon form. And essentially, the left hand side has to be an identity matrix, right? All right. So if the left hand side has to be an identity matrix, then uh, this entry right here, that has to be a 1, right? Can someone tell me how we're going to get a 1 there? We're not. So yeah, it's because the determinant of this guy was 0, right? So that's just like the easy way to see why this, this happens, OK? So you can say, oh, maybe what if I just add like the second row to the last row? Well, you're never going to be able to 0 out that guy. So <coughs> okay, so can't get a 1 here. All right, and, 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 and another way to see it is, did Davi teach you guys the 2x2 two two shortcut in class? All right, this is pretty cool. Let's find the inverse of uh, 1, negative 5, negative 2, 6. All right, you know what that's equal to? It's equal to 1 over the determinant times you f switch these guys, and you multiply these guys by negative 1. 6, 1, 5, 2. So switch main diagonal. multiply uh, the wrong diagonal by negative 1. OK? And so what's the determinant? Well, the determinant, so let's use the 
square bracket notation. 1, negative 5, negative 2, 6. This is equal to 6 minus 10, which is equal to negative 4. And so this guy inverted is equal to 1 fourth or 1 over or ne 1 over negative 4 times 6 5 2 1 that's the shortcut for a 2 by 2 it only works for a 2 by 2 all right don't do this with a 3 by 3 you're just getting it wrong all right so this is the 2 by 2 shortcut and why well the determinant was not zero right so we can see that if the determinant here was zero we get 1 divided by 0 and then we just run into problems, okay? So because the determinant was not zero, um, it has an inverse, and that's the shortcut right there for the inverse. It's, it's, it's super nice for two by two. All right. So that's the first thing we can do, is to calculate inverses. Uh, the second thing we can do is, is determine the number of solutions to uh, a system of equations. All right, I got three minutes. Uh, okay. So for homogeneous, uh, okay. So remember, system of equations, then it'll look something like this. Right, here's A, here's B. Right, homogeneous, again, B is equal to zero. And so if determinant of A is equal to zero, then you have an infinite number of solutions. If the determinant of A is not equal to zero, the only solution is the zero vector. All right. And if we want to see that, okay, so let's consider then the determinant A is zero case, right? So let's say our system of equations was super nice and we ended up with something like 1, 4, 7, 0, 0, 3, 2, 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, right? So this determinant is definitely non-zero, right? If you just take the product of the diagonal, all right? Well, this tells me <coughs> that x3 is equal to 0, right? Or 4x3 four, four is equal to 0, which means x3 has to be 0. And then this will tell me then that essentially 3x3 2 plus 2x3 two is equal to 0. But since this guy was 0, then this guy has to be 0. And then, x, and then by that logic, then x1 has to equal 0 as well. All right? So you see that the determinant of a is not 0. Or, oh, let's do the not 0 case. Whoops, my bad. And so there's only one solution, which is the 0 vector. All right? If determinant, and then if the determinant A was zero, if the determinant of A was zero, then if we take the same matrix, one, four, seven, zero, three, two, zero, 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 all right, then down here, we have pivot, pivot, free, so this is now a free column. And whenever we have a free variable, right, x3 is equal to t, and just by that alone, we're just going to have infinite number of solutions. Okay? All right, so that's homogeneous, and then real quickly, in homogeneous, if, the ter if determinant of a is equal to zero, there's no solution, and if determinant of a is not equal to zero, there's one unique solution. And again, you can do the same thing as I did above. 
So imagine if this right hand side, if these right hand side had numbers in them instead of zeros. Okay. Um, so in this case up here, right, these would have numbers, but then you can just solve for them. In this case down here, if this had like a number <coughs> q, well, you're getting zeros equal to q. And so there's going to be no solution when the determinant of a is zero. Okay. So, okay, so that's all then for this week. So inhomogeneous determinant of A is equal to zero, no solution. Determinant A not equal to zero. There's one unique solution. All right, got through pretty much everything I wanted to. Um, I have homework, so if you want to pick up homeworks, um, I'll, uh, we'll do that now. And then next week, vector spaces. The Tuesday, Tuesday class is going to be the last class on the midterm. All right, and then so just that, keep that in mind. And then, yeah, so I'll see you guys next week. So uh, I'll finally have to learn names at this point. Also, I think the geometric uh, like interpretation of an inverse matrix. Inverse matrix? Uh, uh, not off the top of my head. I can't think of one right now. Thank you. I'll think of my. Yeah, no, I, no, no, I'm not sure. Thank you. Let's see. Veronica. Yeah. Uh, uh, so. Oh, I should know your name. Uh, Alpha. Oh. Mm -hmm. I think it's. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, uh, that's a small one. Same as Lou, right? I guess that I'm with my, my girl. Last name? Fernandez. Thank you. Yep. What? Oh, Steve. Yeah, do I remove? No. Last name. Garcia. 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 You want to pass this back to Ryan? Plus, there's more. There's like systems. Right. Thank you. You don't need to know system. What? What if they quiz me on it, bro? Yeah. Are we Yep. Yes. 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 I'm the best. Last name starts with a T, right? Yes. All right, thanks. Nick, um, Tarsen. Yeah. you woke up to this one. Yeah. All right, here we go. Right on it. Thank you. Last name is Blue. Jerry. You know, I realize I open the curtains when I wake up, then I actually wake up. If I don't open the curtains, I go back to sleep. What? Because there's lights in the next way. Yeah. I'm trying to go to sleep. B, C, D, V, W. Um, D, Z, U, N, G, N, G, U, R, yeah. Okay. If you just transfer in, you might not have a home. Yeah, I just. Oh, okay. But yeah. I turned the last one into. U. So number one. Oh, this is the first. This is the first one, yeah. Because okay. the last one we just got. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Susanto. S O E S A T O. Grace. Graceland. Do you prefer Graceland or Grace? I literally right before this math paper. Mine's like one hour before the math paper. Hopefully, don't ask me really hard math questions. Because I'll be tired.